Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back to a, another Creator Spotlight. Um, we, we have such a special guest coming on today. Her name's Pam Morgan and you guys are going to absolutely love her. Um, you're going to just love her story and you're going to be so inspired by her. So she will be coming up. Um, if you are brand new here, my name's Kelly Weiler and this is Girl Upcycled Studio. We are located in a little town called Zanesville, Ohio, which is just about an hour east of Columbus. Um, but I do offer all these services online as well on my website at girlupcycledstudio.com so you can um, shop the website anytime you want. So I see people come rolling in. So say hello when you come in. If you have questions um, during the interview, feel free to put it in the comment section um, and we will, at least by the end of the interview, we will go over all of the comments and um, answer all of your questions. So um, without anything else. I'm just going to go ahead and pull Pam up so you can meet her. Hello, hey. everyone. Oh, hi, Pam. Thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time today. We really appreciate it. Um, and we can't wait to hear your story. So tell us a little bit first about um, where you're located and give us a little background um, on how you got into art and just a little bit about your own personal story. Okay. Um, well, I am in Illinois. I'm up in the Northwest suburb of Chicago. And um, the, the way I got started with art is that I, I was very young, um, probably about 10 or 11. And uh, my dad worked for the park district and we took lots of classes doing, learning lots of things, but art was one of them. And so I got really into the art at that point. Um, it kind of followed me um, through junior high, high school. I took a lot of art classes. Um, and then I made a big decision to go to college and learn art. I didn't go to an art school, but I went to a college, a Christian college that had, and I double majored in both art and psychology. So I had to take a lot of courses to be able to do that because uh, those are two majors that require a heavy, pretty heavy course load. Oh, yeah. Um, from that point, um, uh, you know, life kind of happened. He had several different jobs, um, kind of doing art, um, worked for an advertising agency, but not doing art, but was, was around that whole kind of field. And then went and worked at newspapers where I did um, layout um, of the text and um, everything you would see in a newspaper or a magazine I was doing layouts on. Mm -hmm. um, the Chicago Magazine was one of the ones we worked on there too. Um, so did that for a few years. Um, and then, you know, the, the whole family situation, um, you know, kind of interrupted things and I started doing side hustles to make money um, from that point on, um, I, I feel like I'm still doing that and I want to move on from that point. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I did some hot side hustles. I, uh, did, um, where I painted ceramics and mm -hmm. I did, um, fabric, I painted on fabric, clothing, um, did sewing, did all kinds of things with that. And then the next side That's hustle perfect. I had was making candy. Oh, wow. And so we did a high production of candy, my sister and I. So where did you sell when you were, you said you had all these side hustles going on. Um, where would you sell? Would you set up at local fairs? I, or festivals? Yeah, I did. I did some um, local like bizarre fair type of things, but mainly it was word of mouth and I went into people's houses and set up in their houses and then they invited people over. Oh, so you were going to home shows. Yeah, yeah. Kind of with my own stuff. And I would have like, you know, a array of things, wood, ceramics, fabric. I mean, it was like everything. It was like a store. I was doing all of the items. That's really cool, Pam. I didn't realize you were doing all of that. That's but awesome. The, the thing is, is, you know, it was very like, like production-like, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, 
that and then the candies, it, it was just like such high production. And, you know, That's I really, I really could have taken both of them to the next step, but I, it wasn't like, I wasn't feeling it. I, it was, it was just, um, I wasn't feeling that passion or that like, wow, I feel good mm -hmm. about this. And then, so I just kept kind of moving along mm -hmm. and then, um, just did several different jobs. But the last job I had was I was a teacher, a uh, paraprofessional uh, at a high, local high school. And I um, helped to teach 18 through 22 year old disabled adults how to get, get life skills, like how to learn their life skills and, and um, how to get a job and taught them job skills. That was my last job. And from then, it's just been where I've started painting again and it, want to take it in that direction now. Mm -hmm. So now you are at a place in your life. So you have kind of found what you want to do, which you're mm -hmm. wanting to paint. Um, what, where does that take you now? So where, where, as far as your painting journey goes, where do you want to go with it? Um, are there things that you that are your favorite things to do, like your favorite mediums, subject matter? Um, yeah, I, I I do see that. I I definitely want to paint um, on on different surfaces. Um, I get the most enjoyment out of that, and I my style is is abstract. Um, I feel a lot of pressure to try to make things look realistic, and I, I it's just not fun to me. So um, I'm striving uh, with your help to get as loose as possible in um, my painting style mm -hmm. so that I can move forward and do more things, more interesting artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, I really love your style, Pam. I feel like you are really stepping into kind of what I always call your fingerprint, right? You're, right. I, like when you when you share a post of something new that you've created, I already know that that's a Pam Morgan when I see it, when it pops up. Like I, uh, I can see you all over your pieces now. So that's so exciting to see you come into that. Yeah, it's 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 taken a lot. Um, I I I've had a lot of life experiences that have kind of um, changed even the way I do my art. Mm -hmm. um, when I look at my art in the past and I look at what I've done now, um, it's, it, there's a, a huge change. Mm -hmm. And so tell uh, us the difference between that with, with what you've gone through in your life and how that's changed. Well, I think, um, the main thing is, is, um, you know, I had children. Um, I had three kids under the age of three at one time with a set of twins and that would be like enough for just anybody. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it turned out that they all uh, had autism. Mm -hmm. And we were on the very forefront of that um, discovery of autism. So mm -hmm. we kind of have been the pioneers where people have been learning from us, uh, our family, and um, kind of following us to see, you know, how, how we do. So mm -hmm. kind of yeah. like guinea pigs. <laughs> so that that's really taken my art in a totally different direction because I feel like before I was like really, really tight design mm -hmm. um, and really flat. Um, and now it's like, I think being with my kids, um, they have sensory issues and they, what that means is that when they see or hear things, it's, it's over exaggerated to them. Yeah. And so, and they react as such. So I've learned to look at the world in a totally different view because of them. Mm. And a lot of uh, behaviors have come out because of that and things that we've had to work on. And, but the way I started to look at the world was that, wow, that wind that just blew, how like exciting it was to see the leaves rustle. And I could, my one son, Kevin, you could see it in his whole body, how he reacts to it. Wow. He just, 
he just moves. He does the movement of the leaves. Oh, wow. And it just is like, and you see this and when it snows or when any, any kind of like weather or smells or like whatever, it's just that you could see it in their movement and their, um, how it affects them it, it's so deeply. Yeah. And I, I feel like that has really made an impact on my life because I feel like it's made me a better person. Yeah. Um, I also feel like it's, it's helped me to view the world with more gratitude. I really appreciate everything more. I, oh, yeah. when I think of myself before, I'm like, I don't like that person I was before. Now I feel like this is a, this is good. I mean, I really like nature and everything. Um, even other people's artwork. I really like intensely like it. Yeah. And, and that's partially because of my experience of living with them and how they experience things. Um, oh, so that's, uh, I, so now I feel like my artwork is, is a lot richer. I, th I feel like it's, it's, it's got a lot more depth and uh, especially my backgrounds. And mm -hmm. I feel like I, there's a lot of movement. I do things I just didn't have going before are going now because I'm trying to let that experience show through me. I, I'm not a good writer. So the only way I can really tell my story is, is to express it through paint. Yeah. And so all I want to do is I want to get better so that I can really show people what I've gone through and, and how it feels to live with the situation I'm in. Um, it's, it's a constant 24 seven situation. I, um, my two of my twins need a 24 hour supervision and my um, one son needs, you know, help with bathing and toileting. I mean, I'm a caregiver. Yeah. So I have a studio set up and on the weekends I get to come out because I'm not working and I, I do work every weekend in the studio. But now since I've, it, I've just, something's happened where I want to paint every day. So now I have to set up inside, like right in the midst of everything. How does that go over with your children um, as you're setting up in the middle of the family rooms per se. Um, does that affect them or does that affect you in any way? Or um, I, I think initially it really affected them and it's almost like they were kept staring at the things I was doing. Like, like how did that picture get there? And, mm -hmm. and then I would try to show them that this is, you know, me actually doing it, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, and then, there's just a, a, a huge fascination in like, especially when I mix the colors or I, you know, stick my brush into the water and then put it on the paper. I mean, every little thing is yeah. intensified with them. So they, they move around it. And I kind of just like, I kind of have to block them out to be able to like express myself, but we kind of got this little flow going. So um, That's amazing. It, it works. It works. That's really a, an amazing thing, I think. Now, do they ever um, do they ever get involved with a painting? Have you gone that route yet? Yes, I have. Um, like my daughter is very interested in art. Um, she does have a lot of difficulty with it, though, because... Um, she used to have a, a lot of a lot more skill when she was younger, and then um, she's kind of regressed. So now we're back to like square one with a lot of things. Oh wow! And so if I give her um, something to paint, I pretty much I don't have to do hand over hand, but I have to like really um, kind of guide her through, like you know, stick your brush into the paint and then. Now you got to wash that brush because you're going to take another color, you know, kind of like doing it that way. But I, I think one of the goals I have is, um, and it's because of her, is I would like to come up with 
um, some canvas art that other people that are either disabled or elderly could do that wouldn't be too hard because like a lot of the paint by numbers are, yeah. are way too hard and the spaces are way too little to paint in. That, huh? So I want to paint bigger um, uh, pictures, but not baby like, you right. know, like they're for adults, um, but yet not too complex where, you know, that they'd have to do a lot to make it look good. Right. So I think that's, that is one of my goals to come up with that. that I'm just very with, so they have, all of them have the sensory issues. Yes. Yes. Um, what music is probably not an option to, to put in with that or is it, is, is music? It is. It is. Or? They've, actually, they've actually had music therapy in the past. So, um, hmm. and art therapy actually. Um, and I've sat through all those sessions and learned it myself, but, um, they, I play music all the time, every day in my house. There's, there's always music on. I mean, it's not on like blasting. Right. But I, I, right. I play like jazz, uh, classical. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, I try to keep it so that it, it, it just helps like between that and the, the wax candle. And, you know, I have certain things going on that help with the sensory issues. Mm -hmm. And then if I do try to help them paint, um, or do crafts, but it's, it's very hand over hand. Mm -hmm. And, um, now, I think that I would like to change that somehow, you know, help is, with that somehow. How old are they now? They're in the 30, they're 30, uh, my twins are 30 and mm -hmm. my oldest is 32 mm -hmm. and they're still all living with us. And, um, our goal is we're next month we are moving up to Wisconsin because um, we feel that we can get better services up there for them um, as an adult. Yeah. So we got a big move coming in very quickly here, but um, exciting though. It they exciting. for for them to go forward and thrive, um, they need um, to be able to have more opportunity, um, even residentially. Um, and Illinois doesn't really provide what they need. So that's yeah. kind of where we're at. So how do you think they're going to deal with this big move? Because I know sometimes changes are very difficult for yeah. people. It's going to be, it, it already is really hard. I've, we've started packing and it's like, um, it's, you can't really explain. I, my oldest son, you can, he, you know, he actually does have a job too. So he's really progressed um, from where he was. He's like, uh, he's a stock, a stock clerk at um, a local grocery store. No, um, he's, he's doing good. I mean, um, he can't drive or anything and he needs help with some um, like living skill type of things. Mm -hmm. um, but um the other two, um, they're they they're gonna need help. Like they they're not gonna be able to live on their own or anything. So right, right. Hmm. Very interesting. So um, I just wanted to pop up real quick. Um, your Facebook page is P Morgan twenty o two. So if you know, it's people... a, it's actually P R Morgan. Oh, PR. Okay. And I might have typed that wrong to you. So Let me change that um, real quick. PR Morgan. Let me change that real quick. And see. There. Oh, nope. It still says <laughs> PR Morgan. So um, I want to just let everybody know that they can go over there and see your work. Um, so while I'm trying to fix this, um, tell us a little bit about um, where do you see yourself going in the future with your art? Do you see yourself moving into like this kind of, a, I, I would say kind of a therapy, kind of like a, art therapy is really what you're doing. I, I mean, I, that comes naturally to me. Um, I, I'm, I actually, I'm not certified in art therapy. I, I would have had to go on to graduate school, which I couldn't do at the time financially. And 
um, then just life kind of takes over because you kind of have to make money to be able to live on your own and everything. Mm -hmm. But, um, and it's too late for me to really go back and, and get certified in that. It's, it's, it's pretty, um, it, it's a um, lot of clinical hours. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's like, you know, kind of like doctorate type of thing. And right. I, I just can't see me being able to focus on that. So now I think what I want to do is um, I want to keep working on collection. I am, I am selling my art. It is selling. Yes. Um, it's mainly through um, uh, Facebook um, and, uh, you know, word of mouth. Uh, I would like to expand on that. Um, I, I do see myself selling specifically online, but collections. Mm -hmm. And I really want to try to be smart about it and do it so that I'm not letting somebody else make money off of my work. Right. So it's going yeah. to be a little harder of a road, um, I think, doing it that way. But it um, is, isn't. I mean, I think that we have the access to the internet and to do our promotions. I think that it's easier now than it used to be. Yeah, that's true. When that's I was a teenager that, you know, I, I just was reliant on somebody to hire me or, you know, whereas now we can get ourselves out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I think uh, I'm doing pretty well on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, what, what I do discover is, is what, what was interesting is, um, Instagram followers, uh, I learned are very, they will really follow you. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they're much more, and I, I really have a lot of fun on Instagram because I, I, there's nothing better than going through and looking at other people's work mm -hmm. to me. That isn't, it's so like satisfying to me. Yes. Um, but when, when I tried, I think it's much easier to make, um, the reels on TikTok. Um, I think it's just an easier uh, platform to work with. And I haven't done a lot, um, but I, I have the reels I uh, did and put on TikTok that were um, of my sketchbook with the doodles. Mm -hmm. uh, they did really, really well. Um, the, they did really well on Instagram. I had over 3,000 views. Oh, that's on, awesome. On, on three of them. That's or, amazing. Or, that's good. And, and TikTok is, is I'm finding that those followers are even more dedicated. They'll go over if, if I like their stuff, they will go over to my Instagram mm -hmm. and like all of my stuff. I mean, That's it's just, wonderful. it's, it's amazing. I, it just, and it, it, there is a strong group of artists on TikTok that are just amazing and they're all different ages. So you have to be like, you know, like I'm the, the, the old lady, <laughs> but, um, it, I, that's what I like it's, about it. It's very accepting there. Yeah. I know some people make jokes like, oh, that's for kids, you know, but right. really not. I, I feel like everybody's niched in very right. tightly with, you know, like, of course, we're in the art niche and uh, or niche, whatever you want to call it. So right. uh, everybody's very supportive and um, cheering i feel like they're genuine and cheering yes 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 they're sure. on i love it yeah i enjoy it there let me see i need to put your other links up that's so so good so are you doing any lives over on tiktok yes oh uh, well I'm, i guess I, I did no i haven't done a live there yet i haven't done this this is actually my first live so this is your first live. This is my first live. Everything else has been taped. Oh my, I didn't know that. I thought you were doing, because I did see a watercolor uh, sample. Yeah, that wasn't, that was, wasn't done live. That was done um, as a, a tape. So this is the first time. So oh, wow. I, this is a big thing today for me is to get <laughs> past this point so that I can go live. Right. I, I really feel like... um. I, I do have a, a teaching aspect to me, mm -hmm. um, more uh, teaching, but like even more towards the therapeutic sense. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to be open to opportunities. I, I feel like even going on here, you never know, like maybe somebody will see it and say, 
yeah, you know, maybe we can collaborate or, yes. or you know, something, you know, you don't know until you put things out there um, exactly. what's going to work. And that's why I want to be open up about the direction of the business, which way it's going to go. I, I want to keep selling, but I want to be open to like opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, I love all that you're putting out there. Um, Lisa says, wow, look at you. I know we're the same age and I'm just now exploring the reels and TikTok. I've been so resistant. You give me hope. That's well, thank you. Doing. I appreciate that. Yeah. You're doing great. Yes. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> I'm not sure who this is, but they say you seem really calm live. So you're doing a good job. Well, yeah. thank you. It's, I'm, it, I'm trying. I'm so, trying to just talk to Kelly here. <laughs> so um, what, what do you, like if you had a free day, um, what would that look like to you? If you had just a free day for you to have to yourself and nurture yourself and do whatever, what would you be doing? I would definitely be outside mm -hmm. um, rather than inside. Mm -hmm. um, I really just uh, find that um, I love taking photographs. Um, and, and it's just not like the typical photo. Like, it's just something that like even randoms things. So I have a lot of photographs I've taken. Um, I just, nature is just, it just helps me relax. Um, mm -hmm. I, so I, it, to be outside hearing the birds chirping and and um, feeling the wind and the sun, it just it just is so helpful to me. Um, I love music, so I always have some kind of music going on. I, my my favorite music is jazz. I used mm -hmm. to when I was younger. Um, I lived a little closer to the city uh, and in an apartment, and there was this. Um, jazz studio right nearby a jazz bar and used to love going there and just you know listening to the music it was just so mm -hmm. inspiring mm, that's awesome so do you actually go out and paint outside like a they call it plain air i believe do um, you do i anything? could I, I i can paint i think now i can paint just about anywhere yeah i have to like going inside and trying to paint within all that chaos in there. Oh in yeah. My house. Um, uh, yeah. I, I could see myself doing that more. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would like to even like go to locations um, and paint different things. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, my time is, I do work. I work full time. I have mm -hmm. this, my caregiving job. I also have a brother that I take care of who's disabled and he lives right next door to us. And oh, um, I didn't realize you were taking care of a brother too. Yeah. He's, he's on the autism spectrum now. I mean, he didn't, wasn't diagnosed with that when we were growing up. Um, he was diagnosed as having like severe learning disabilities, but as my kids have discovered that they have autism, we've kind of discovered he has it. And both of my parents have, have left the world they're, they're gone mm -hmm. so and i've kind of been in charge of everything um with the siblings and he's um you know i promised my mom that i would take take care of him like mm -hmm. i let her go i let her go yeah. in peace because i said i i will take care of him for you yeah i bet and, that is a constant worry when you have an adult child that really can't be by themselves that as a parent. Yeah. Was, uh, she was, she was like, a, she was in so much pain, but she, and she couldn't, she didn't want to give up because of that. And I, I did, it's the worst thing is seeing somebody in pain. I, I just, I don't do well with that. I'm just like, just go, we've got it. I've got it, you know, just let go. And, um, you know, he's, I've been able to get him to live on his own and she would have never, ever, Thought she told him a little bit more, huh? Yeah, she would. I've done things, had him do things he would have never been able to do. So it's 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 a success story, but it's also a story that has a lot of uh, a lot of day to day grind. Yeah. And, um, 
just uh, can can wear on you. I think the art has been very therapeutic for me. Mm -hmm. Just oh, to like yeah. release, you know, I got all, everybody coming at me all the time. So yeah. it's helped me a lot. That's good. Yeah. And and we we talk a lot about that, about the therapeutic value in mm -hmm. going, showing up to the canvas. Yeah. Whether we like what's what we've done or not, at the end of the day, it is just showing up and express expressing ourselves and getting any of that whatever's going on throughout. We all have our thing. So getting it out, right. I think, is just and it's way cheaper than therapy, right? Well, yeah. And I feel like that, like when you complete what you're doing, there's such a, a different kind of satisfaction. It's just like it almost feels like I like your whole again. Like it, it's hard to describe, but it's like, you know, here I released whatever. And now it's like, like it's all complete. Mm -hmm. And it, you just feel that sense of purpose. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I don't like to leave things undone. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a painter that it's like, I'm going to, paint that till I'm done with it because I, I can't have things undone. The completion is what gives me the most satisfaction. You so. are, you have been, have inspired me just by listening to you because I'm, I am sitting here looking, you know, when you said that, I'm like, Oh gosh, I have stuff that has been sitting here forever unfinished that is bothering me. And why, why has it been sitting here? Yeah. That's so, it's, and, Pam, yeah, you it's, are, you are doing all this amazing work for your family, your children, your brother, and you're still showing up and you're still getting the things done. Right. And I know you're probably the person that has the least amount of time. I don't have any time. I, I've had to really carve it out. And that's why I try to tell other people too, that are in situations that um, where they're working or they are taking care of people. I say, you can do it. You it, you can do it. You just have to like, just carve out the time right off the bat. Once mm -hmm. you start saying like every Saturday is my time and that's, I'm going to paint Saturdays and so you stick to it and you just go for a few months. You have just now taken Saturdays over for yourself. It's that consistency of work mm -hmm. that makes you be able to do it. It's not the sporadic here, there, you know, all over mm -hmm. the place. You've got to be a lot more disciplined about it. And you've got to say, this is my time and you got to take it. Yeah. Time blocking. And that's, I think the, I think the hardest thing about it is starting it. It or is. At least it is. That for myself. But, you know, it's been proven once you do start something after so many days or weeks, right. it's just a habit. It's, and it's a positive habit. Oh, it's. I'll tell you, I did that 28 day uh, flower challenge where I mm -hmm. painted every day and I actually did paint and I it painted small um, so that I, I felt like I had more like, like I wasn't like overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. But once I got into that painting every day, I've, I've been basically painting every day since then. That's I got into the habit. Uh, it's just, it's so weird. You just have to condition yourself and you can do it. It's, it's just, you have to say I'm doing it and just commit. And know? it's probably like, if you don't show up, you you're missing it. You're at that oh, point now where it's like, like, it's like, it's like you know, people who don't are used to exercising and, or like taking walks and then they don't walk for a while. They start to feel like real sluggish and, and like, you know, it's the same thing with um, art. You have to just, show up and you've got to exercise it. And then you will ha feel the, have the feeling that you want that exercise every day because it'll make you feel that good. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, okay. I want to show your banner again. Um, so she is PR Morgan 2002. And mm -hmm. you can find her, that's Facebook and Instagram. It's all the same. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then she's also on TikTok, which is where she really likes to be. So I would definitely, I need to make sure I'm following you on TikTok too. I'm, I probably I just feel like I'm just beginning there, but it's, um, 
it's a lot of fun. And mm -hmm. um, I, I do see myself doing more um, reels and, and tapes. I just, um, I, I'd like to try to make people that have, are, have maybe considered doing art, but haven't done it. I feel like I want to appeal to them. Like, like you can do it. I mean, it doesn't take what you think it does. You, you know, no, you don't have to make a masterpiece, but I, you can use it in so many ways to benefit yourself. I think that's what I want to appeal to. And then of course I want to sell my work, <laughs> but um, that is just happening. And that I'm just letting that happen. And, and mainly right now, since I don't have a website or anything, people are just uh, direct messaging me, you know, or asking me right out, are you selling that? And, it's just kind of happening. Yeah. Um, do I just you, want it to you, happen more. <laughs> do you see yourself maybe getting a website at some point? Do you think? I do. I mean, my husband yeah. and I are in disagreement about the website thing because um, he thinks that I, I should have more sales before I, I have the expense of the website. Like it should pay for itself. Like right. I should get my sales up to a point and then the website will then kind of take over for that. And then mm -hmm. it'll be worth having. Mm -hmm. So I, he's kind of right, but mm -hmm. in, so, in some ways, but on other ways, I'm like, they've got to have somewhere to go to that's easy, you know? Yeah. And I, I've thought about doing Etsy, but because I've always wanted to do Etsy, but I, I'm just like, can they do all of the advertisement and everything for you? But yeah. I don't know. I it don't is know. a great starting point. Um, I did start off at Etsy myself. I do still have it. I don't really use it. The listings are very low cost. Um, I think, I don't know, it used to be like 20 cents a listing, you know, and then they get a, like a small percentage of your sale. So it is a great place to start. Um, when, did you, when did you get your website in comparison to your Etsy account? Um, okay. So I think I started Etsy in 2012 or maybe I can't remember if it was before then, but even when I had my Etsy, I just did like a really, I don't know, it, it was not a pretty site, but I just did some kind of inexpensive website. It, I can't even remember what I used. So I didn't get a really, really good professional right. website until I got the studio here. That's when I really, you know, bumped my quality up on the on the website. So, and I'm, even I'm always, I'm always curious to see how pe the early stages of how people mm -hmm. get to happen, because like even just learning how to make, you know, get yourself out there and mm -hmm. get some followers, you know, get eyes on your work is mm -hmm. a job in itself. I mean, right. I mean, I, you have to have eyes on your work to be able to sell yeah. it. And yeah. so if and the not more you show and the more you show up lot, like doing lives, doing mm -hmm. videos, you know, posts, I right. mean, make sure that you are really being consistent with that. Yeah. Um, and it will, you know, you will see growth. Yeah. Um, Ian is asking if you're doing marketplace on Facebook. Um, no, I've heard of, that people do sell on there. Um, and I bought things on Marketplace myself, mm -hmm. not art, but other things. Um, I, I, it's, I'm interested. I'll look at anything. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to make it like real easy, um, especially since I'm going to be having this big move coming up. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to take a lot of um, just disruption, start getting a new studio set up and everything. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, everything will be probably a little bit on hold until that move is made, huh? Well, I'm trying to work in the midst of it, believe it or not. Oh, wow, so you are just... I, I don't want time to go by where I'm missing. Uh, like, How are you going to do that when you're in the middle of a move? You're going to do like a little travel kit or something? So I have, you have just I, right, now we're, right now we travel back and forth. Um, with um, We do have a house up there. And mm -hmm. we travel back and forth and I bring my stash and I bring, um, you know, acrylics. I mean, I bring everything and mm -hmm. every time I, and I always work up there. I don't let my Saturdays go by or I, maybe sometimes they take Sundays instead. 
I, that's my time. I no, it doesn't matter where I'm at. That's amazing. I mean, truly, I'm telling you, I really am inspired by you. That's because I'm like, you know what? What is your excuse, girl? I need to get, you know, I need to get painting. I need to get on it. So I feel like everybody is feeling the same way. I don't know if you are reading some of the comments, but yeah, I see some of them. Everybody is just so, yeah. And it says, I love your commitment. Yes. Um, now, are you on Pinterest too? No, I've got to do that too. Because um, that is a really big search engine. So that's good for your SEO. And, that's good to get. You can sell on there too, right? Uh, you can, but you, I don't know if you need a website for that. You, I think it integrates with Etsy. So oh, okay. I mean, your situation though, Etsy might be. Yeah, that's true. For you, but there are some art artistic platforms out there as well. So mm -hmm. um, there are options like that that are just, um, you know, towards artists only. So right. um, I'm not... I don't have a background in that, so I, I don't have any advice for you on that, but, um, you know, you might want to look into it. Okay. Yeah, that's, that I will. So, so what do you have coming up? Um, you have your move coming up. Are you doing anything, um, anything else this summer? Um, you're going to take a, are you, do you take breaks and go on vacations? Um, not really. Um, I, our break has been going up to the Wisconsin house, like as mm -hmm. a second home. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, I do plan. Um, I do want to attempt. I, I know I definitely want to go to your retreat in October again. Oh, I can't wait to see you. I mean, that, that made such a big difference to me in so on so many levels, because it wasn't even just going there, meeting everyone working there. Wow. I, I haven't left. I haven't like been out on my own, like to go somewhere in years. It's like I've been in isolation and then to get on a plane by myself, to get a rental car and to drive it and to be somewhere new. That was like a whole thing in itself too. So I mean, exciting. It, yeah. So that, that was like an experience. And then being at your retreat was another experience. And yeah. it was just, it really uh, lifted me up. I, I just, a meeting, actually meeting the people that I've been talking to um, through the group, it made Michael. such a big difference. It, yeah. I, it was just, it, it, you can't even compare it to anything. I was going to show you this one. Wait, it's a sisterhood for real. Does that look oh. familiar? <laughs> I, hang, I hang this in my studio. Oh. My name tag on it. Oh, that's so cool, Pam. Because I just, I just, um, the memory of that meant a lot to me. Yeah. One so. of the ladies on here, so Bobby, who is in the club, she says, yay, I'm so happy you're coming again. So yeah. I can't wait to see you, see you yeah. guys again. Stacy, she says she missed it last retreat, but she's definitely going this year. So you haven't met Stacy, have you? No, no, I can't wait to meet her. I, she better come or I'll come get her. That's right. She was at the SOAR retreat. So yeah. she was at that one. I, I would, I'm interested, kind of interested in going to that too. Oh girl, it's going to be great. So they just did an announcement for those of you that don't know. Um, I'll be there again, of course, at the SOAR. Um, Dion Woods will be there, Turquoise Iris and Debbie Beard just confirmed that she will be there. So they're going to have, um, three of us there um, creating. So it's going to be a, a really, really fabulous time now. And I will say each retreat is so different, um, which is what makes it so fun. So um, they, they each have their own little, uh, I don't know how to explain it, like the, a vibe about them, right. something special about each and every one. So, so yeah, if you're able to, to um, get to that one as well, you want to make sure you hit sore. And um, that is in, somebody's asking, where is that? That is in South Charleston, Ohio. So um, let me see. And you know what? I'm going to post the dates as soon as I get done in the comment section because I, I don't want to say it 
wrong. Hold on. I might be able to find it very quickly here, but um, it is a lot of fun. So I, I do. I do have one thing I want to say is that yeah. the uh, kimono I'm wearing is from Girl Upcycled Studio. And your necklace. The, the necklace is from Earth and Summer's Kiln. Mm -hmm. Kiln. And the earrings, I don't know if you can see them or not, are from Bluebird Relics. Oh, Elise. So I've got, I've got my people on me. I love, 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 love. It's beautiful. Beautiful. I love that kimono too. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, I love okay, it. Okay, so the soar is on July twenty uh, second through the twenty fourth. So those of you asking, yes, make sure you write that down. Um, sorry, I didn't have that right in front of me. I wasn't expecting to talk about that, but yeah, it's awesome. So I can't wait to see you. Yeah, um, is there fun. is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Do you want to show us any of your pieces close up? Is there anything that is near and dear to you as far as like favorite pieces that you've painted? And if so, why? Why is um, it? I think this piece I'll show you is um, one of my favorite. Oh, wow. Look at the shine. Look at the, there's got to be some gold on there, right? It's all, it's all gold. Oh, even, so even the, um, oh, the sides are gold. Yes. the It's all wood and it's got the, even the frame I painted gold. Like oh, I, so pretty. So, so that, pretty. that's, I think that's my favorite because I really felt like, um, that was me. Like I wasn't painting myself, but I was painting what I was feeling. What you were feeling. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think a lot of people have connected to this one too. Um, so which makes me feel really good. So yeah, that's my, I, I think that's one of my favorite pieces. And I, I can, I can feel that that emotion comes through, you know? Yeah. I want to fall down here. Everybody's loving it. Everybody's like, so beautiful. Everybody loves that. Sometimes one. when you show the, the pictures, especially if they have gold in them, it's mm -hmm. hard to tell like what they really look like unless you move them. It's, yeah. You know, it's. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like that too on glass or anything shiny. Yeah. Yeah. Hard, so, but, oh goodness. Is she for sale? Somebody's asking. <laughs> yeah, she is. She has a face. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to let the your favorite ones go. I'm I find so it it is, but then it's also very satisfying just that someone else liked it that much. Yeah, to buy it. It means something, you know. Yeah, that's what I feel like. Um, and I've talked to a lot of you in inside the group about um, like the God whispers that I talk about and like praying over your, like I'll come to a blank canvas and just try to pray over it because like knowing like I, I'm not keeping this, do not get attached. This is for somebody else, you know, let them find it in the, in their perfect timing in that perfect moment, you know? So right. that's kind of um, a lot of like what we talk about and, um, with the intuitive art that is and and when we're painting is getting that inside emotion out and letting it go off to whoever it need, you know I, I, think it needs to. You just, I guess the more you paint the more you get that I mean mm -hmm. when you're consistently painting you can it's easier to let go mm -hmm. um, you feel like you're not really paint you're painting what you love but it's not yours you know what I mean it just you, yeah. you it's just, it's a different, whole different way to look at it. I just kind of, when I do a piece, it's just kind of like, we're visiting for a while. Right, right, exactly. Because <laughs> I know the piece, and actually Stacy um, bought that, the dolphin, the intuitive. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like fell in that was a wonderful. love. I fell in love with that little dude. And I just like, okay, we're just, we're just here for a while. Yeah. Yeah, we're that just, was a wonderful for a while, piece. You just made me, I could feel, I felt good. Like right, I could feel right. it from the painting. So that's so cool um, when we can experience that and know oh, that it's 
you can go off and do the same thing for somebody else, you know? Yeah. So again, um, for those of you watching, please, please go check out Pam's uh, pages. She's PR Morgan 2002. You can find her Instagram, um, Facebook, TikTok. So she really prefers Instagram and TikTok. Um, so definitely check her out, um, those two places. And I'm going to give you just a minute to say anything you would like to say. And I'm going to check the last comments. So if you have any other questions, please put them in right now. Okay. Um, Stacy says, I just love your outlook, Pam. Thank you, Stacy. That means a lot. And Stacy says a dolphin is my husband's friend now. That's awesome. <laughs> That's good. That's it's nice when a friend buys from you, especially you know it's go, gone to a good home. So. Yeah, exactly. Because it's personal, right? Yeah, it's exactly. near and dear. It's very personal. It's like sending off your chill, like it a child. Is. It is. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else, Pam? I want to give you a second. If there's anything else, if you could, I want to leave it with this. If there is somebody out there um, that you know is holding back what would you say to that person or what would you say to even your younger self before you came into um, your artistic self? I, I think you, uh, what I would say is, is, you know, you have, fear can rule your life um, with everything you do. And if you worry about what other people are going to think or, um, if, if they're going to, if they're going to like what you do or you base it on other people's reactions, um, that's where the fear comes in. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like when I got rid of that and I said, well, I'm going to put my stuff out in the world and show it because I want to show it and, and I'm willing to take any feedback on it, positive, negative, whatever. I just really don't care if, if they like it or not. I, I want to get it out in the world and you have to get that mindset yeah. because that's the only thing that makes the fear go away. Yeah. I love that. You do. You have to just like, I don't care. You, it's right. like, you, do. you have to, it, it's, um, you know, it's not, you have moments. I always have moments where I like that creeps in that, yeah that ugly voice, but you have to just like push it away. It's, it's just, mm -hmm you know, your, your things that have been said to you in the past, your past experiences, whatever, nothing matters now. You, you're, you've got to go forward to the, what you want to be. You have to think, you know, not let the past or anything get in your way of, and make it a fear based yeah. motive. True, you know? true, true. So true. And the last comment here says, amen. And oh, that yeah. is true. Well, Pam, we're going to leave it at that. And I'm going to let you go back to your life and <laughs> go back to your canvas. So we had some people saying thank you. Um, and they really appreciate hearing your story. And it sounds you've been you've been such an inspiration to each and every one of us that have listened to you today, Pam. And we just love you. And thank you so, so much for taking time to do this with us. I really appreciate it. Well, and, thank, you, thank you, Kelly, for giving me this opportunity. I, I think that the fact is, is I felt like I could do it because of you. Um, I, I feel comfortable and um, I just, I, I just love what you do and the presence that you give out. It makes, it inspires me. So um, yeah. I think, I, I don't know if I would have done it with anybody else first for my first time don't make me cry don't <laughs> what, cry. what an ugly cry here oh, thank you that is so that's so just that just warms my heart you don't and, even and know. thank you every everyone who came um to support me today i really mm -hmm. appreciate it it does mean a lot to me um and i hope that uh, you feel that i'm being really supportive of you too oh my goodness. Yes. Always. You're all, you are so supportive of everyone. And actually the whole group, the ladies, it's just, I feel like it's just a, such a cherished place. All these ladies that are there, um, you all are very supportive. 
Well, thank you again, Pam. Well, thank you. And thank you, each and every one of you that tuned in. Thank you so much. And just remember, every other Wednesday at one o'clock, we have the um, Creator Spotlight where we just kind of shine the light on some of these talented ladies and men. We might have a couple of men in in there um in the background too so um we welcome more men so it's not just for ladies but um but we love um just kind of spotlighting them and um, showing all their talent so thank you so much for tuning in and we will talk to you all really soon all right thanks bye, bye everyone